Yeah, that was three queen eyes. Dude, I yeah. can't. We had three queen eyes. Do we have more queen eyes here? Hold on, let's look. No, we don't. Is that Nash? But it seems like we still have the Fiend effect is in full effect. Is that Nash? As we see a Nash did on the just screen. Like, just, did, <laughs> did Fiend just take the entire region under his wing and say, here's what you do to win? I mean, and he says, yeah. pick Nash and Queen Nye, and they all went okay? I mean, you're going to look at one of the best in the region and try to replicate what he does. That's what uh, I do as a Blasters yes. player. I look at the best Blasters players, try to emulate that. People do that Holy with Fiend cow. as well. He is setting the stage for what happens in this, wow, in this region. Juneror and Lily are looking really good starting this one out. 40 seconds in now, and they've already gotten two stocks from Ailzo and Manexo. Yeah, Juneror and Lily having a great start here. Juneror playing the uh, the standard Grim in doubles that you'd expect to be seeing. Based any any player of any level of any skill ca like capacity in any region could pick Olgrim, and I go, that makes sense. It's a, it's something that I have just learned that it's like in doubles you can never complain about having an Olgrim on your team. Um, uh, Axe and Lance just provide so much for being able to get confirms and also team combos, and his signatures just kind of cover the perfect angles. Meanwhile, on the other side, of course, we have Lily coming in with the Nash, like you pointed out earlier. Hammer is getting some love in the way that pros are playing it in the 2v2 meta. Mm -hmm. Of course, Spear has always been getting love because it's such a strong weapon. That goes double for right now. So it totally makes sense. You add in the signature kit, you add in the high movement speed that Nash has as a legend. Not a bad pick by any means. Yeah, it's just a matter of whether or not you really value the dexterity uh, on Spear and Hammer. Uh, that stops, I think, a lot of players from, from picking up Nash. Um, Sides to come through there, no amount of decks is gonna, gonna change the force of that hit right there. Lily uh, going in for sure. That's also something that the Nash brings to the table is very high strength and solid signatures. You may not be able to get away with all of them in ones like you can in twos. What a devastating Dude, finish it, it, from it, Juneror. It, it's not even like. They're, they're not even taking their time taking these stocks out. Like, Drew Roar went out there and just was like, I'm taking you down with me with this ground pound. And I mean, I'm absolutely certain that if we let that game go one second longer, Drew Roar would have been in the blast zone too. But that's just what uh, he was willing to do there to, to get that last stock. That was, that was incredible. Um, maybe I'm wrong, Sparky. Maybe it is just the rain of... of it might be. Again. Like, look at this. But, oh. Lily doesn't finish it off, and Juno is just kind of like, oh, my I'll turn. Do it. <laughs> he, just, he just goes in. He's not making it back with that. It doesn't matter. And it was last talk scenario. They put out wow. almost double the damage that the red team did. You can get lost in the sauce. We've talked about that this weekend, but it seems like Lily and Juneror, like they're, they're two pigs and they are just bathing in it. Lily is doing an incredible job today so far, forcing Aelzo on to a character swap, forcing Manexo on to a swap as well. Okay, so this is the first Katars. Well, okay, I'm being so mean to Queen Nye by saying this is the first Katar. I just, I don't know why when I think of Queen Nye, I don't think Katar legend. <laughs> That's just my problem. Yeah, this is the, this is a, Queen Nye isn't a Qatar legend. This is Queen Nye is Queen Nye. This is the first time that I've seen what I consider a singles pick yes. coming into into uh, into doubles here from Elzo onto the Caspian. Uh, Manexo goes down very quickly, and Lily, she's doing a great job here on the Nash Falls. So that sider goes in for the other side, here, and that side stick doesn't get, I think it's like interrupted by a side light. So Lily's still holding onto her, her stock here. Uh, and Manexo, well, trying to clean up the fact that he went down so early on. Ooh, recovery start. off the top from Manexo and, and the weapon toss down. Ailzo trying to put pressure onto Juneror as Lily is spawning back into this one. She's looking for a weapon, picks it up. There's the spear in hand. She's getting handled by Manexo now, who's found about five or six hits, just barely falling away from that down signature yeah, that Ailzo threw out. That spacing was too close for comfort. Uh, <laughs> Lily played around it very well, but I was like, wow, you are very confident. Uh, to, to not get hit by that because that move can knock you up pretty early on. Ooh. I, today I learned. Yeah, that, that, that reaches up there. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I, I will admit, I don't see a lot of Nash both when I'm playing Brawlhalla or watching Brawlhalla, so that's quite a surprise to me. That's awesome. Nash players know that hit, uh, and then uh, non-Nash players don't expect that to hit. Yeah, that is something else. I mean, I understand with the hammer, right? Uh, the neutral stick for sure is there. Um, but here we go, back into the game. 
evened up in terms of stocks. Juno Roar could go down pretty early on here, and that could be a huge change for Elzo and Minexo. But Lily with that scoop comes through. Oh, that ground pound could top. be an early knockout, and that's going to be it. Elzo goes down. Juno Roar securing the lead. That weapon, the weapon toss stopped the Axe Neutralite from, from hitting, which was quite funny. Uh, and Juno Roar does go down. Very close game here, Sparky. A little bit of a bonk from the weapon toss on the head of Manexo. Lily, nice. she's chasing off stage. Nice alley. Complete disengagement. So she just gets back oh. onto the main stage. Again, devastating neutral signature. Yeah, the neutral signature here from Lily on, on the Nash, on Spear, on Hammer, both has been doing so great. Sidelight comes through. Manexo has to recover back to the stage. Pogo stuck recovery. I think Manexo's just done for. No, had all the jumps. Gets back to stage, but Sarah on the way through, and Elzo falls off the bottom of the stage. It's a 2 0 lead for Lily and Juno Roar. They're speed running this bracket. Where the, let's, uh, South they, America is on PB okay, pace. Okay, yeah, yeah, because I was going to say, it's not, it's not just Lily and Juno Roar speed running the bracket. It's right? everybody. We are. We are cruising. I mean, it's just we're, we're in this really interesting uh, state, at least for Europe and South America, where the teams that are better than the other teams are very clearly better. <laughs> That's, yeah, the, we're, it definitely we're, looks we're, like one team is fighting a different class of player. Yeah, and, above and, them. and we're moving forward, and then and then we get towards the top three, and it's just this crazy exchange of game fives, right? And that's and that's really exciting to see. Lily and Juno are playing so hot. So Elzo and Minexo. Another chance to come through here. We've already seen that Elzo is willing to bring out counter picks even after a single loss. Uh, zero damage dealt with the gauntlets there. There was 59 oh, damage yeah. on arm. So it was all Katars and then uh, some early stocks. We can see in the graph there towards the end. Elzo was just falling short uh, really early on, mostly to the down airs and X ground pounds coming out um, from Junior. So we have a Kaya switch up coming up from an Exo here. Elzo still sticking with the Caspian. So PR as a metric is always kind of a loaded metric because it takes into account so much of a period of time. And then we also yeah. have seeding that comes into play here. So that's going to explain a little bit where we talk about the different class of player. Lily and Juno are coming in fifth seed compared to Elzo and Minexo coming in at 10th seed. Mm -hmm. Elzo and Minexo have already outplaced their seed by making it into the top eight. So an incredible effort so far from them. They're looking to push it further. They need the victory here if they want to push it to a game four and possibly grab the W. Minexo, d -like ground pound. Juno was there to save. Oh. Couldn't quite get it in time. Do they get the double here? They're not going to find the double, but Elzo Could is get ready. Juno Roar's trying to make it back. Elzo had that edge guard there. Sides it gets it. That will be the knockout. And it was a delayed hit, but it is technically a double there. Oh, dodges up into the ground pound. Lily gets a second oh, ground pound. Lily off stage with the hammer. fantastic. Juno Roar gets the finish, and it boxes Elzo into the stage. Weapon throw forces the dodge, and Lily onto the edge guard with Juno Roar here means that Elzo has no chance to make it back. Gravity cancel down, sick through the sky, can't make it through, and Minexo already in orange here in game three, Sparky. It was looking so good for this red team. This was going to be the fight pounds. back that they needed. This was going to be the momentum shift, but it all of a sudden fell Side apart. Sick. Look, that oh. in orange sent off recovery. screen. Lily was looking for another one. D-Light, side light, doesn't get the recovery out from okay, Elzo. Lil Lily's Ground getting lost in the sauce. <laughs> from Juno Roar. <laughs> oh my god. That was literally only six for about 10 seconds. Yeah. And oh, and the They're weapon. Done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pinball happening here on Apocalypse using the stage to just completely bounce pass to the left side blast zone there on the bottom. All right, Juno Roar and Lily uh, celebrating a little bit early here against Elzo. Let's see if they get that uh, team combo Jess, set up I, here. I don't think it's early. I'm looking at four uh, stocks from this blue team. I mean, if, if Juno Roar just keeps stutter stepping for the next two minutes and Elzo takes the, the 1v1 against Lily, look at that. Gravity cancel side sig, down sig over here, ground pounds into the weapon to get the nair. Elzo kind of playing crazy. Look at that. I mean, I know I'm being hopeful here, but like, if he's not, like, that's two side sigs that he has sniped now at this point. I have seen players self destruct or worse. <laughs> that is true. I, okay. Down to coming through. Wow. Juno Roar's just going to let Ailzo pick up a three piece there, but there's the stomp into the neutral sig. You're seeing the fist come up from Juno Roar. That is going to be a 3-0 as they are moving on on the elimination side of this bracket, Taza. Yeah. There you see the kerfuffle that happened over on the left side. Ailzo going to end up falling. Yeah, there was a moment where Lily, after she hit like the fourth hammer ground pound, she was like, oh, 
we've got this in the bag. Recovery comes through. Junior goes back up, and Lilio's like, what are you What are you doing? I need to get down here and stop all this. Throws the weapon down, hits it, and then is that gra yeah, gravity canceled down. Sig, chase dodge right back up. That was an amazing edge guard there. And then Ailzo going down towards the end. Uh, it's a little bit of a matter of time. Although Ailzo had a really great... Uh, Two side sigs there, stopping the neutral sig was going to be the knockout there, and we could just see how incredibly early Vanexa went down in that game. And even Ailzo, if you look at the peaks of all of those stocks, ended up losing them at about the same time. Let me do a little bit of quick math here. Ailzo took 485 damage. We're going to divide that by three here live on the broadcast. Yes, we're doing math, ladies and gentlemen. It. That is 161.